If I were to ask you to name a form of entertainment that Sonic has been in, other than video games, what would you come up with? There's comics, cartoons, music, more cartoons, more comics, stage shows, there's that, board games, even more cartoons. Uh, wait, go back a few. Stage plays? Yes, there have in fact been a few officially done Sonic stage shows, as well as some non-official ones. Now you might be thinking, no, that can't be true. But yes, there have been. You might have even seen one or two, but it's never quite clicked because they're so rare or often part of a larger entertainment event. So you don't really realise at the time that you have seen an officially done stage play or stage show. But they do exist. They're very rare, and in some cases, almost all traces of them are lost to memory. But for now, let's take a look at one of the lesser known forms of Sega Entertainment, the Sonic the Hedgehog stage shows. For the sake of this video, I'll mainly be looking at stage events which had some kind of narrative, not necessarily just Sonic standing on stage as part of any old event, otherwise this video is probably going to be several hours long. I'll be going through these in no particular order, but we start with one of the most recent Sonic stage shows, which, all things considered, is probably one of the strangest. YouTube entertainment channel Random Encounters, who specialise in making musicals based on video games, created a video called Mr. Needle Mouse the Musical, which was a musical adaptation of Sonic. Sometime after this video was uploaded, Sega invited the group to perform their musical at the 2011 Sonic Boom event. At just over 4 minutes long, the cast wore basic Sonic costumes and sung a number of songs, mainly about their characters and relationship to one another. It was a comedy which involved a lot of slapstick. It's not my kind of thing, but the audience who were there that watched it seemed to laugh, and various performers actually got a lot of cheers when they came on stage. The group did do a follow-up with a Sonic Boom musical, however to my knowledge this has yet to appear on stage and is limited to a YouTube video. When you think about everything that Sega did in the 1990s, Sega World Sydney is potentially the strangest. It's become the stuff of legends now. So little media has survived from it, and yet it seems that every year a new incredible discovery is made. But one part of the park which we know existed, but has sadly become almost lost media now, is the original Sega World Sydney stage show. The park did a number of shows during its lifetime, and the first show was a dance show which performed three or four times a day depending on how busy the park was. The stage was in the middle of the park, and in full sight of the food court, meaning park guests could dine and watch the show in relative comfort and a very relaxed atmosphere. Based on interviews with the former Sega World Sydney staff, this show consisted of several dancers in fully costumed Sonic characters interacting on stage with one another. Whilst no video or even photos of the dance show exist itself, we do know what Sonic looked like from a number of TV adverts and specials about the park. But, thanks to some recently discovered video by yours truly, we now also know what the Sally costume looked like. The footage appears to show the cast walking towards a meet and greet, but very significantly, we also see a sign for Robotnik. And whilst no footage exists of a Tails costume, we know he must be in the show because despite a lack of photos and video of the show itself, we actually know the entire plot, thanks to one very unique item. Sega World actually released the entire show on audio CD, containing both the songs and dialogue from the show itself. The plot was that Sonic and his friends crash land in Sydney, Australia, and discover that Robotnik is trying to take over the entire country. The show is quite cringeworthy. If you thought the songs in Sonic Underground were bad, 
you haven't heard anything yet. This is a sample of one of the songs from the show. I'm the dude with the attitude. My shiny blue quills and power red shoes. Those bad nick ways are not for me. Gonna catch Robotnik and bring him to his knees. Gonna take Tails and Sally too. Here okay, that's enough of that. Despite being quite a big show in terms of production and scale, Sega were not happy with the final product. According to an interview with a former staff member that worked at the park, by the end of 1997, less than one year after the park had opened, Sega actually requested a new show be made for the park, one which had a lot more action. And this led to the creation of the second show, a puppet show. The puppet show became infamous a few years ago, when photographs of the show emerged and were uploaded to several Sonic sites around the world. The show was heavily influenced by the Sonic cartoon shows, and it starred Sonic, Tails, Sally, Robotnik, and even the robot Grounder. There was also a huge bird which acted as an announcer. We don't know much about the plot with regards to the puppet show, other than Robotnik invents a new robot making machine, which will produce a powerful robot to defeat Sonic. Only the machine produces Grounder, who is very slow and not very bright. Tails and Sally also appeared in this show and helped Sonic, but their contribution isn't known. Technically, there was also a third stage show at the park. Shortly after the puppet show was created, there were two large tubes at either side of the stage in which a puppet Sonic and Tails would pop up at different times throughout the park and would talk to one another. Often they would announce times for shows and other events happening at the park, but they would also pop up and tell each other jokes or engage in some kind of banter, giving the guests something more to look at than just a talking clock. So technically we can call this a stage show, especially since it was in sight of the food court and you could sit there and potentially watch Sonic and Tails talking to each other for a small portion of the day. But in the long history of Sonic, there is another stage show which almost became lost media due to time. In 2003, Sega of Japan held a special Sonic party to help promote Sonic X, Sonic Adventure DX, and Sonic Battle. Taking place at Tokyo Joypolis, the event invited fans to play the latest Sonic titles and help celebrate the launch of Sonic X. For fans who attended the event, they didn't just find gaming pods, but also art tables, merchandise stalls, and even a meet and greet with Yuji Naka. But one of the most unusual parts of the day was a live stage show which saw performers wear full Sonic mascot costumes and act out a small play involving Sonic and his friends. The performers wore the Sonic Adventure costumes, which first debuted at E3, along with a very impressive Dr. Eggman costume. I covered this in my Sonic mascot costume video. You can find a link to that in the description. Unfortunately, due to the fact that this took place in 2003, there was no YouTube, no Facebook, and MySpace wasn't even a year old. Mobile phones with camera technology were also barely two years old, and internet speeds back then were quite poor. We're talking a time when even basic broadband was not as mainstream as it is today. And because of this, there's very little documentation about the event. What photos that do exist are very low quality, made for 56k era internet, and as a result there's no video footage of the event. No video footage of the event at all, let alone of the show itself. However, through some research I have been able to find a lot of images from this show, and through further investigations I've also been able to find a few very old accounts of the event, and I've been able to piece together a rough outline of the plot, and even the title of the show. The show is entitled Sonic and the Curse of the Vinter vs Sonic Velocity Machine. That's a very loose translation of the show's title. Another translation claims that the show was called 
Sonic and the Curse of the Monster versus the Velocity Machine. Wow! The play itself was set on two stages, a lower ground floor level stage and a first floor level stage, which was connected via an escalator. Sometimes cast would enter or exit via the escalator, but mainly the action took place on the main ground floor stage. So whilst we don't have video of the plot, I hope you'll find this an entertaining effort at trying to recreate it. So the play starts with a member of the Tokyo Joypolis staff walking on stage. They thank the audience for coming and encourage them all to cheer as Sonic is on his way. This person leaves and Sonic enters. The audience cheers wildly. Sonic talks to the audience for a while. He thanks them for coming to the event, or his party, and then he asks them if they've seen Tails. At this point, Amy walks on stage, and the two share a few moments together. Sonic wants to know if she's seen Tails. She says she hasn't, and Sonic leaves. Amy talks to the audience alone for a while. We don't know about what, probably saying she's going to marry Sonic or something else. When suddenly, above the stage, there is manic laughter as Eggman appears. Eggman slowly descends to the ground floor stage via the escalator. He reveals his new invention, a small wrist mounted device, which will destroy Sonic and allow him to take over the world. How this works is anyone's guess. Amy tries to stop him, but Eggman defeats her using his machine. The audience boos. At this point, Sonic and Tails appear on the first floor stage and descend the escalator. The audience goes nuts. Eggman tries to use his machine on Sonic and Tails, but they're too fast. They're able to outwit Eggman and take his machine. Tails appears to control it. And the heroes are able to defeat Eggman, because of course they do. Eggman lays flat on the floor, and after the battle, Amy is saved. A few jokes are said, and the team celebrate with a victory pose. And that's the show. The plot is amazingly simple. But if you've ever been to a theme park and seen a show where the characters are all in full body costume, they're normally quite simple in terms of plots. It's very likely that they had audio voiceovers or even actors off stage providing the voices, and then the performers on stage would do their best to respond to whatever dialogue was happening. It seems that the show was at one point moved to a shopping mall, as other photos exist which also include the wrist device which can be seen in a few of the Joy Polis photos. It's a shame that so little media of this exists, both in terms of video and higher quality photographs. The problem here is the limitations of the technology at the time, across multiple formats which has resulted in a lack of documentation. Personally, I'd love to see this in full someday, or even just more higher quality photos of what currently exists. What about you guys? What would you would you like to see a video of this at some point? Do you think Sega should do more shows like these at events? With performers in full Sonic costume acting out smaller scenes? Let me know down there in the comments. And whilst it's unlikely that a video will surface of this show, I did recently find that Sonic and Sally costume footage. So who knows? Stranger things have been found. See you next time. I'm the dude with the attitude. My shiny blue quills and power red shoes. Those bad Nick ways are not for me. Gonna catch Robotnik and bring him to his knees. Gonna take Tails and Sally too. Hey guys, if you liked this video and would like to continue the adventures, please follow me on Twitter or Instagram. Links to both can be found in the video description. If you'd like to help support the channel, why not buy me a coffee at the link below? Every coffee donation is a huge help to supporting the work I do, and it helps me get videos and other content out faster. Even the smallest donation can help keep this channel going.
Thank you.